Hey everyone, Chris Gogolin here with episode number 11 of my Jump Game Review series. Uh, we're here, uh, just started June, first week here. Uh, the June OCS event is off and running. Uh, Tom jumped out to a very huge lead here, uh, starting the month 7-0. and 0. Um, You know, unless he falters down the stretch, he's going to have a pretty impressive record and put up a pretty uh, solid score. Um, not really too much else going on. I'm three and one right now. A couple guys, uh, Lenny's two and one. Uh, a couple guys are one and zero, oh, winning their first games. Uh, Greg Shaw, zero oh and three. Uh, JJD, zero oh and two. Uh, Gavino's two and five. So certainly some people who may have uh, <laughs> run into Tom along the way. Uh, he's been playing pretty, really solid the last couple months. But certainly one of the better online players or online exclusive players. Uh, I haven't seen Tom play in a live event that I know of. So, uh, but there's still, uh, you know, we're only two days into the month here, so still plenty of time for a lot of other people uh, to get their to get their month rolling. Um, if you haven't signed up yet, you have until the 8th, uh, which is Friday. So make sure you get that uh, taken care of. It's only ten dollars. You get twelve games. Uh, you get an exclusive uh, AI foil slip mail to you if you play at least ten of those twelve games. So be sure and check that out. Uh, the, today we're going to look at two games sent to us. Uh, these are a little bit more of the uh, unorthodox decks. Uh, the ones that are being focused that we're featuring. Uh, the first game here we're going to look at comes to us from uh, from Mike Turner. He's playing against Silver Glen. Uh, Justin Branch from the UK. Uh, Justin's playing, uh, Silver Glen's playing map. Uh, Mike Turner's playing hidden base. Uh, so we'll get to feature a deck we don't really see too often. Uh, hidden base using superficial damage to uh, play lots of weapons, B wings, and weapons. That's kind of the, the focus behind this deck. Uh, Justin's playing a pretty uh, standard alert my star destroyer map build, is what it looks like. Try and get a quick uh, peek here at Mike's deck when he looks for his uh, first system. Justin's going to do the normal start with the shuttle, pull Kylo, pull lightsaber probably. Um, I know a lot of you guys are, everybody's been vocal on the forums about map and this pull chain and things like that. And, uh, you know, I know the design team and the advocates are looking at it behind the scenes. So, you know, your voices are being heard. They are looking at it but I think the thing that's the biggest problem with map is it does a number of different things very well and if there is going to be any change to the deck it's trying to figure out what change to make you know do you just affect strategic reserves and see what that does do you mess with the shuttle pull Kylo pull chain um, you know and try and slow the deck down that way you know, uh, they typically get, you know, just thinking about this for a second. So they give themselves one, two, three, four, five. One for them is six. So they start with six, four, basically. One, two, three, four, five. One for you is six. Yeah. So they start with six. So the shuttle costs four. And Kylo deploys minus two aboard. So he deploys for three. So even if you took away the minus two from the interrupt, you could still put it all out turn one. So that may not be enough to slow it down. You, any of you, any deck your opponent gives you one icon, you could essentially do it. Which is most light side decks. Uh, they give you at least one. Uh, hit a base doesn't, throne room wouldn't, but hit code, QMC, watch your step, WAP, all those decks give up profit. They all give up at least one, if not two, icons to uh, to your opponent. Uh, maybe some of the CR or C, uh, CPV decks might not. Might only, uh, they're probably still giving you one from at least a system and then a matching site. All right, so he's going to do the normal setup there, uh, and then we'll get a look at the B-Wing deck, uh, or hit a base deck. So he's got a number of systems here, which he'll use to flip. Um, lots of, uh, you know, guys in ship. It's not playing any matching pilots. Uh, there's just not enough room. Card efficiency with this deck is kind of at a key. 
uh, but it's going to use space weapons to try and you know take over space. Starfighters are going to get hit with X-wing cannons. Uh, you got a couple of those in here. Capitals can be shot at with uh, intruder missiles. Uh, these shoot at plus three if it was already targeted by another weapon this turn. So the concussion missile here is usually the one that they'll fire with first. These can shoot at either star fighters or star uh, capital starships. Adds one to targeting a star fighter. Um, so typically you'll fire with this thing first, even if you know you're not going to hit just to then add three more with the intruder missile when you're shooting at a capital. Uh, and then the B-wings here, they can fire two weapons per turn, and each of their weapon destiny draws are plus two. So if you fire with the first concussion missile, uh, you're shooting at plus two. Maybe you hit something, maybe you don't. Maybe you shoot at something, you know. Star Destroyers typically have like armor six, armor seven, except for like Finalizer and Executor, which are a little bit more. Um, but you'll try and take a shot at them. See if you can't maybe get lucky with the first draw. Um, but if you don't, now you're shooting at plus five with the intruder missile. Uh, and you've got a pretty good shot to, uh, to take that down. Uh, you can combine that with some things like stay sharp uh, to fire during the control phase. Or, or you can add a weapon's destiny number to your power. So when you fire that intruder missile, the intruder missile goes to your used file. And then you play like stay sharp and add seven power. Uh, can certainly change things um, in a battle there. Um, where's the other? Uh, hit and run to move away after the weapons phase after you shoot at people. Uh, power pivot to make the something you do hit immediately lost or to make it uh, power zero even if you don't hit it. Uh, here it is, steady aim. Uh, this is the other card that lets you add to uh, weapon targeting. You have to do it before the destiny is drawn though. It only affects the specific draw. So if you draw a ship and then play like starship levitation to, to cancel it and take it into hand the redrawn destiny will not get the bonus um, some people forget about that or don't realize that it only affects that particular the next card drawn um, not whatever the final destiny is like some other cards add to the total weapon destiny that one only adds to the particular draw all right now that we've kind of given you a little glimpse into that mike's going to start getting systems out He'll pull a projection with Wackling, put that on the site. Uh, you know, he's just trying to slow down damage in the early turns until he can get his systems out uh, and then flip his objective. Once he flips his objective, he'll be able to cancel two drains a turn, potentially. Which is pretty, uh, pretty good, because typically... You know, map is only really draining in one or two locations, so that would certainly be advantageous. Um, you know, as long as he can keep his hidden base from getting probed, you'll probably see... <coughs> It'll probably take him about maybe turn three. He might get the all the systems out and flip. Uh, we're going to do finalizer. He's going to the Star Killer base for now. I guess he wants to keep that around a little longer. Doesn't want to give... Wants to get out of his deck. Doesn't want to give Mike an opportunity to uh, to shoot it. Uh, like I said, doesn't want, didn't want to. No, he doesn't have Jakku out, so he put it to Star Killer base first because it deploys minus four to an episode system, uh, and then he just moves over to Narshada. I thought he might keep it there for a little bit because he wouldn't want Mike to try and shoot it before he flips. Um, that way he can't probe. Like if Mike comes down with his weapons and kill, clears the finalizer now. Um, and then with just the shuttle and maybe one other Star Destroyer, it's gonna be, it would be a lot harder because the shuttle has to take off, which it can't because Jakku's not out yet. Um, eventually, I guess, you know, it, w it would take off and then he could come battle it before it could move and probe anywhere. Um, so this is a slightly risky play, but uh, Mike doesn't really seem to have uh, much of a hand going here. So I guess it's, you know, he'll flip, he'll get uh, some solid drains in. Kind of early here. Mike's just going to draw a huge hand, trying to find, you know, enough ships and weapons and interrupts and things. It is a very combo-intensive deck. It does sort of rely on having multiple cards together. You don't just have like a lot of those. Just, you know, drop this card. And uh, and battle kind of stuff. Typically, you're you're trying to combo several things up together. 
did draw the systems though, so he's got two, three, four, five, six systems total now. Uh, some of you might be looking at this card closer, wondering what that does. Uh, cancels close call, really. Uh, it does something with asteroids. Not really seeing it used for that. It's a used six that cancels close call. Uh, since close call is a very popular card in a number of dark side decks and can be very critical sometimes in the outcome of a game. You know, if they just survive one battle, especially like in a deck like this, you deploy, you fire at the finalizer, and they close call the weapon destiny so you just miss, and then they move away and you never really get enough combo pieces back together to come after them again a second time. Um, that could be it. You know, sometimes you only get that one shot to, uh, no pun intended, to, to take them down. So you have to, uh, you know, make the most of your opportunities. All right, he's gonna put corn and rogue nine. I think this is down. Uh, who weapon destiny draws are minus two here, which is interesting that he would put that with the B wing. So the B-Wing drew out the barrier. Now he comes down with another ship, which draws out a second barrier. Wow. Uh, and he grabbed the first one. So it's costly, three-fourths for that second barrier. Uh, but I think he's out of ships to work with here. Uh, the B-Wing's got uh, permanent pilot ability, too. Got Green Leader here who adds a destiny means when he's with a snub fighter and he can cancel immunity to uh, of any starship here, making the, this ship hit. So he can cancel the immunity on the finalizer, forcing him to have to lose something. Uh, and then we've got Corrin who adds one to attrition here, uh, but makes weapon destiny draws minus two. So these two guys don't really work too well together. Firepower comes out. He's going to force push, he'll probably, oh, strategic reserves, so he's going to want to cancel some drains. He's probably going to move away for a while here. Final Edge is going to move away from these guys now. It's going to make it kind of hard for, uh, for Mike. He's going to need multiple ships again with weapons to come back after this. Um, so the, the double barrier definitely was uh, incredibly helpful. So, you know, Hidden Base is a deck that some people do feel like has a good matchup against map, and it can. Um, you know, depending on the version, the blaster version with the extra ping can do a little bit more damage a turn, and then we've seen some of the map versions also run Search and Destroy, uh, which can do quite a bit of damage. Uh, Mike flips during the draw phase, but not before he let Justin draw three cards. That's a minor mistake there. Um, certainly could have uh, forced him, or slowed him down with his card draw a little bit. The uh, hit a base objective makes you have to pay one to draw a card. Uh, we'll do a Rebel Artillery for one damage. There's the Dreaded Strategic Reserves, cancel on the four strain. Um, that's a card that's certainly under some heavy scrutiny uh, and may get revised. It's at least a consideration uh, to see if strategic reserves will get revised to uh, to only let you stack non-unique guys there as opposed to unique ones as well. Uh, it was a non-unique, so in this case it would have happened anyway. Um, but now looking, you know, it's a safe bet that uh, most of the dark side ships are on the table already. So light side's gonna go ahead and spread out, uh, especially because he's flipped, he can cancel two four strains, so he can cancel this drain at Kifix, and cancel the drain at a no at, and then he's just taking the one here from the ground site, which uh, is not that big a deal. Especially if he can get, you know, some of these drains in for two a piece. Uh, but he's drawn huge again, which is certainly gonna limit his ability uh, to deploy battle and you know, use weapon destinies and things. But so 
so we can cancel those two drains. Silver Glen's going to get a little risky. He's going to Ellis Kylo over to the Star Killer site. Control the First Order Leader, Force Drain plus one here, plus another one. Uh, he's always like it has two battlegrounds, so he can't pull ultimatum. Or he could pull it, it won't do anything. Uh, but he'll get a drain of three in over here now. Uh, so clever move there. Uh, wait until after the two drains had been canceled in space to then play the Ellis. Uh, hopefully he's got a Gick. I mean, it's... Uh, or at least uh, the Jakku system. Oh, Jakku's in the Lost Pile. Um, it's not... Uh, you know, likely hidden base decks, especially these type of decks, don't really run a lot of ground characters. But, you know, there should be possibly an EPP or something floating around, an EPP Luke or Obi, uh, you might find in a deck like this. So I would expect that uh, the, only re the only way he would make this play is if he had a Gick. He's going to move around and he's going to try and find that hidden base system. He probes two, the first two and misses. Oh, he's going to move in front of the Star Killer site and block that one. As opposed to, to moving in front of the B Wing, obviously makes sense. Uh, certainly the B Wing with the weapon, fairly safe bet. Uh, that Nar shot up might be the hidden base. Uh, now Justin's got to pay one to draw one each card. It'll certainly limit the number of cards that he can draw. It'll change the order of cards, you know, throughout his deck. You know, whenever I'm playing as hidden base, I always feel like the card I'm spending is the card I really want to draw, and the card I'm drawing is the one I'm going. I already have, you know, a copy of this in my hand. I don't need another one. Well, and he's got. Couple of drains of two. One of them's going to get canceled. There's a unique trooper. He might have a non unique in hand, but there's certainly a unique one. Uh, you'll use a new secret base here, which uh, says if you just force drained. At a battleground system, you can draw the top card of your reserve deck. It also helps you get your systems out faster, so it speeds hidden base up a couple turns. Um, sometimes even just draw on that card, especially you know with some stuff like intruder missiles. Uh, you know when you're putting the, the missile down, and then you can draw it into hand. Um, he's going to probe Tatooine. That's not it. He's got Solo and Ray. I think he said Ray was his resistance agent earlier. Uh, we're going to get a look here in the used pile. So there certainly has some options. He's already got one barrier, so he probably doesn't need to take the second one. Uh, it's a hit. Could be helpful um, if he's worried about Kylo Ellising back over. Um, probably not the most likely possibility, but certainly could happen. He could grab the projection to put on this side here to help reduce that drain. Um, but he can also pull ultimatum and accomplish the same thing. Uh, slain and corporal facilities. Deploy on Roche. You can deploy a starship weapon from reserve deck on your B-Wing. Also retrieve two force whenever your starfighter hits an opponent's starship or vehicle. That's an excellent card. That may be the one he gets out. I don't know if he's going to have too many opportunities to shoot at stuff anytime soon. But getting that in play and then being able to retrieve force uh, certainly... Uh, pretty important uh, to the longevity of this deck. <coughs> Especially with Matt being on the zero side now, that Ray's on the table. I don't know how long Ray's going to stick around for, so retrieving force is something that also gets cancelled by the flip side of the objective, unless BB-8 is on table. I don't know if that's something, that's another thing that people have talked about. Would be nice if Matt didn't do that, uh, that may get taken away from them, possibly, or is at least being considered as an option. Uh, again, so many things the deck does, trying to figure out what's the right one to take away, to tone it down. 
is going to be an ongoing discussion for some time. Obviously, there's going to be some playtesting data, so it's not something I would expect to see a solution on uh, any time in the next, we know, couple of weeks. Uh, other options here he's got, Gold Eater and Gold One would be helpful in space. It forces opponent to use uh, one force to draw a card for Battle Destiny. Uh, he's got three force left, so he certainly has some force available. It might come into play a little later. Uh, Obi is a guy who draws by himself. Might just want to take him, get a ship out. Uh, Wedge doesn't really do a whole lot alone. He adds a Destiny to power or attrition, but only against uh, independent starships, which this deck doesn't appear to have any of. Um, could just get one of the weapon Destiny helpers as well. So certainly has lots of options here. It's kind of going to depend on which approach he wants to take. Uh, his focus on now is obviously on the ground, clearing out that ground. Location. He'll battle. He'll draw his two destiny. Oh, he took the it's a hit. No arguments there on taking the it's a hit. Uh, certainly could come in handy to cancel Ellis. Uh, at some point later down the road, it might cancel a drain. Um, or it could cancel uh, limited resources, which is something else we see map run from time to time. There's the gig. No surprise there. But now here comes the question as to what type of counter beat should we be expecting? Doesn't pull ultimatum here. Doesn't doesn't need to because he's just going to cancel. Oh, he top decked. some troopers. This is kind of what we were expecting. You know, you go down and you, you take something away from map, take their ground site or whatever away, and just usually you're going to get hit with a counter beat with like three or four troopers and a trooper assault. Mike went ahead and played Yoda Stew combo. Uh, during your opponent's turn, you put four cards from your hand back in your force pile. Uh, certainly a good way because uh, it's not limited to a particular phase. You can do it at any time during your opponent's turn. Um, I always felt like the combo, the original version might have said control phase or something, but maybe not. Um, so yeah, you let your opponent deploy a couple cards thinking, oh, he doesn't have any force to play any of his interrupts, so if I'm going to play like first strike, or maybe he can't barrier me or anything like that. So you let the first guy come through, then play a Yoda stew, then put a couple cards down, and then when they go to play the second guy, you barrier him, and then, you know, kind of mess up their whole plan. But you've already forced them to commit to their action now. Um, and now they've got to start thinking into what else they can accomplish that turn. Um, but also gives you options to, you know, to, to play interrupts if first strikes out, or to, uh, you know, use weapons and things. Yeah, here comes some FN troopers and stuff. He's waiting for Phasma. No, he's going to play. He's going to cancel the FN guy. He's going to keep him from battling. Uh, he can still do his text outside of the battle, though, because it lasts for a remainder of turn. So he can still cancel game text. He can cancel Solo's game text so he doesn't add the battle destiny. There's Phasma. Phasma's going to add the destiny and get a used pile pull. That's probably would have been the better one to barrier. Because, like I said, FN is going to work anyway. He's not limited to only happening during battle. Kind of stupid. He just immediately dies as a result of it, though. That's another card that people have, have asked about, <laughs> talking about trying to get changed, uh, is the FN, because you have no defense against him. You know, he's he's got, you know, his game text works at any time. And it works for the rest of uh, for a remainder of turn. So 
you know, even if you barrier him or something like that, they can still do what he just did and cancel that guy's game text. Um, some people have asked that to be only during battles. Shuffles his own reserve deck. Maybe just tracking some better destinies around. Yeah, this is going to hurt. I mean, Solo and Ray cover 14, so that's not too bad. But two fours there gives him to 26. Solo and Ray get him to 22, so. As long as he draws at least a three here, he should be, he's not taking overflow. And he draws a four. But they're all, they're all immune, so none of those troopers are going anywhere. Uh, Phasma wins a battle. He gets to retrieve a trooper, which will be the FN that he lost before the battle. Doesn't have aim high out, so it's free, but... It's not that big a deal. He's only retrieving one or two cards anyway. I doubt he's going to win too many more battles. Uh, but Ray dying does mean that map gets to flip back. Um, really wasn't going to be too much else going on that uh, he was going to be able to work around. But it does give him access to Point Man, which is a pretty huge card against Hidden Base because then you get to look through your entire pile and figure out which card you want to draw and take into hand as opposed to uh, you know having to take the little guesswork. He's going to move the ships around now too. He's going to move not only to block the drains but also to get himself in front of two systems that he has not uh, probed yet. There's only He hit three already so it's likely one of these two. I would be shocked if it was Roche just sitting over here by itself. Uh, but he's got what he wanted. He's got this guy right here in front of the finalizer. There's another unique trooper cancel on a drain, so that's twice he's done it. Pretty decent destinies floating around in there. Justin will probe Naboo, not Naboo. Another B Wing. We're going to get an intruder missile. I'm curious that he's running both Solo and Han Chewie and the Falcon. Um, I guess just picking whichever one he thinks he needs. And we kind of called that one two turns ago. And our shadow was the hidden base. In this particular matchup. I'm sure he rotates that from game to game. It's going to put five cards back uh, in Justin's deck. Uh, Mike's going to have to get a shot here, try and take out that Executor. You know, he uh, he had some pretty good destinies in there to work with. He's going to fire the Concussion Missile first. Draws low. That's fine. Didn't need that. Really didn't want to... You know, really wasn't trying to hit with that anyway. Uh, but now he's going to fire the intruder missile. If he can hit it, he'll just power pivot and make the whole ship immediately lost. He draws a four. He was shooting at plus five. Because it was already targeted, plus the ship adds two. So he was shooting at plus five. Uh, this thing's only armor eight. And neither of these guys add to its armor or anything. So that four would have hit it. He dark times only a couple cards in his hand. Uh, so that's kind of unlucky that he had the dark time to subtract one. So he's not going to take it out from power, uh, from hitting it. So he's going to have to use power now to do it. So he'll play stay sharp. He'll add seven power for the intruder missile, which he just fired. 
the intruder missile will go to the used pile, and then we'll probably see him play power pivot here to make that power zero. Yep. Landing Corporal, which is not, not going to do anything anymore anyway. So, and he's got to pay one to draw because of the map destiny. After the map objective, it's got that built in gold leader and gold one function. Nah. He had a couple better destiny cards in there. So, drawing that one, a little unlucky, but he's got a ton more power. Uh, 18 to 3, so he's going to play close call to try and redraw it, and now it's going to get cancelled. Now close call will end up getting stacked with the objective, uh, so it'll come back a second time around, but it doesn't get redrawn here. Uh, certainly could help things. So we had close call and a dark time. Those are three cards here left, so he's been saving those for around for a little while. Um, and then so that three, by forcing him to only have the three, uh, he can use superficial damage to forfeit the concussion missile. We got a peek at that in a second. Uh, he's top decking cards. So he had 15 battle damage. So he's losing both pilots, uh, Hux and PV both forfeit for five. So then he had to lose five cards on top of it. So he lost Phasma, the Destiny, Dark Time, the Destiny. That he played Command, Resources, and Mika, all from Used Pile. Oh, these are some of his probe cards that he just got back. So he's going to go ahead and lose them. Uh, losing something like Limited is pretty good for him too, because then he can stack it on the objective and just have access to it when he needs it down the road. Uh, but like I said earlier, the uh, superficial damage, each of your character's vehicles and weapons may forfeit one, uh, starship may forfeit one of its weapons using forfeit value equals three, and those weapons go to the used pile. So the concussion missile that was on the B-wing covers the three, so he doesn't have to lose either of the ships. That's pretty important, uh, especially because these guys don't draw battle destiny alone. But unfortunately now, with the hidden base probed, he's uh, no longer able to cancel four strains. And he moved his ships around in such a way that he can't get ultimatum either. So he's going to get hit for three with this Kylo drain, and then uh, two here from the finalizer for five. He, he could have limited it to four, but he'll get hit for five. Uh, as expected, we see map stack the close call. There's the Ellis to move these three guys out of here to move them to a place where they can drain better. Mike's going to choose not to cancel that drain, which, or not to cancel that Ellis, which I agree with. I think there's just better things to use the It's a Hit for. Yeah, they're moving over here. It's going to be a drain of one. It's not, you know, it's not great. It's not good. You don't want to take more damage if you don't have to. Uh, plus, you know, you could cancel the Ellis and take a card out of his life force. But at the same point in time, if you look at what else It's a Hit cancels, uh, it cancels limited resources, which we know is in his lost pile already. And it also cancels force drains at sites related to systems you controls. So uh, canceling this drain here with Kylo is going to be pretty huge. That'll save him three force, which is a much better opportunity. Uh, it also puts it into a position if he can follow it through in his reserve deck, he can end up drawing it back into hand with a new secret base. So he can drain and then take it into hand and then be able to cancel a drain the following turn. <coughs> which is uh, probably going to be more important in the long run. <coughs> Top decks the projection. 
Then we'll say the it's a hit to save the drain of three. Another one of those key interrupts for this, uh, or interesting interrupt, shall we say, for the uh, hidden base deck is this card, Rapid Fire. Battle just initiated. Deploy for free a vehicle weapon or starship weapon from hand or reserve deck on your participating vehicle or starship. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to pull a weapon for free out of his reserve deck and put it on this B-Wing, get the concussion missile. Doesn't have to pay to deploy it. It can shoot for free. And he's going to hit the Chimera because it's only armor 6. He draws a 5 plus 2 from the B-Wing. Makes it 7. So that's going to go ahead and hit that ship. Now he's going to play hit and run to move away. Let's pause here for a second and talk about this one. Alright, so he's going to play hit and run to move away. Unlike other cards like Alice and Neobrin, hit and run does not move your starfighters like a group. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups now. Uh, hang on one second. So hit and run does not move your starfighters like a group. They move individually. So with firepower out, he's moving away from a location. The opponent occupies, so he's going to lose two four. So he's going to lose four, plus the hit and run, which is a lost interrupt. He's going to lose five cards to move those guys away. Um, looking at me, he's got 20 left down. His opponent's got 22. His opponent can draw two Battle Destiny, but he's only got one card left in Reserve Deck. So even if it's a 7, he could lose the gun to the used pile and one of the two ships for 4, and that would cover it. Um, he knows map, doesn't really have any other ships. You know, the shuttle's already gone. Jakku never went out. It couldn't take off anyway. Finalizer's out of pilots, so this thing's in trouble, and this ship is hit and gone. I would not play the hit and run here. I would let the battle finish. I would take the damage. You know, Worst case scenario, like I said, he draws a 7, and you lose the gun and one of the two ships. You've got three other ships in hand to work with, so not a... Uh, a huge loss and you'll still have a ship here at Naboo which could then drain for two next turn you can't block all your drains then with this finalizer um, and then certainly be a very risky play with that thing anyway uh, the finalizer is probably going to get taken it's probably going to have to move over to star killer base and bring some of these guys up for forfeit because um, this thing does not draw by itself uh, and is very easy to get taken down looking at me you got Han Chewie Falcon with two destiny I could pretty easily take it down, especially because you just put Rapid Fire and the Weapon Destiny that you drew was the All Wings. Uh, so you just have stacked two fives together, 15 cards down. So you could easily take that ship down. And then it just comes down to a race in terms of paying to drain. Uh, and if you could loop the It's a Hit around, I think you'd be in a pretty, uh, pretty great spot. So I think this is probably the move here. I was actually watching this game live, and uh, at least some of it. I missed the first half of the game. I came in at the end right around like one or two turns ago and kind of you know, saw the way things were holding their own and going for. And uh, I know Mike didn't think he would lose four. He thought he would only lose two. Um, yeah, it was ruled that way uh, five or six years ago that it does. Because they, they're separate movements. Each ship moves independently. So therefore, it triggers firepower each time something happens. Um, so that certainly caught Mike a little bit by surprise. And 
I'm going to foil his plans. But, uh, yeah, I would not have used a hit and run. I would have just let, let the battle resolve. Again, with only one battle destiny, what's the worst that could happen? Now this thing has to move over. He'd have the two fives stacked together. He shuttles a couple troopers up. But, I mean, if you had two fives sitting together, you're looking at ten. Like, what do these guys cover? I think they all cover ten. Three. Seven. He didn't bring them all. So he didn't even bring them all. I mean, he's got a close call over here. You can subtract three or cause a redraw from. So, yeah, he could make the ten down to a seven. That could certainly happen. But, yeah, he's, he's not getting a Battle Destiny back. So, you activate 13, 14 force, drop on Chewy Falcon, battle this thing, do some serious damage and clear it. Uh, now you're going to get drained. From, he was going to stack a trooper. You're going to pay to drain again. He's going to project of telepathy. Makes him pay two before he has to cancel that. He draws the top card, which is the it's a hit. He gets a hit, doesn't do anything for him. He pays three and drains again over there. And then he just moves away. Yes, I think he missed an opportunity here to battle as well. Uh, he paid to drain. One of them got canceled. The other one he lost two cards for, and then he lost a third card from that. So he spent nine... 10, 11 after the projective telepathy to do 3 damage, essentially. Um, and now we'll probably see. Now, Phasma does add Battle Destiny with the Trooper, so he was at least getting one Battle Destiny. Happens to draw into a control tunnel vision, though, so that'll be good. Cancel the Kylo drain. Probably see the finalizer move out. Maybe in front of Green Leader here. And he's gonna lose to Han Chewy Falcon. I guess he doesn't feel like he has enough force to deploy it and battle. because Phasma is a leader as well, so he would have to use or lose force to draw Destiny. He got the shuttle back. He's playing the interrupt again to put the shuttle back into play, giving him an, another ship floating around out there. Or he plays two shuttles. That's certainly a possibility. Um, we do see a lot of map decks run two shuttles so they don't miss the first pull. And here we got... Corn and the Blue Squadron guy paired up again. Drops red eight, which will give him a destiny or a defensive shield. Uh, you can put Gold Eater down with him, or just put the X-wing cannon on it and shoot the shuttle. Yeah, he's gonna try and get some battle damage through. Intruder missile on the B wing, whether he fires it or not. Probably wouldn't need to fire it, just uh, send it used to cover three battle damage. Alright, so he draws the five, so maybe he's got the two left on top. That's not doing much. Uh, but some good damage here. The kick is not stacked on the I will finish what you started. Does he have a second one? He does. And 
Now he's going to pay one. He's going to bring the lone B-Wing from Noah over to Kiffix. So now he's got the two cards there. He'll move Corn Horn back so he can then cancel the four strain with the It's a Hit. He brought Gold Leader over. I would not have brought Gold Leader over. I would have drawn a card. Yep, because he just let himself get limited. Now he's going to play the It's a Hit to cancel the immediate loss of four. He's got Ultimatum satisfied, so this is only a drain at two. So he's lost his ability to cancel drains repeatedly. By doing it like this, in order to save himself losing four cards right now. Uh, so turn. So if this game goes three more turns, he'll be at the break-even point. So we're in turn nine now. Definitely a close game between uh, these two guys here. They both have, uh, you know, had their successes in a couple of key battles. Uh, you know, clearing out the ground site, and getting Ray off the table, and putting the flipping the objective back has worked very well. Worked out very well for uh, for the map deck. And uh, you know, shooting on the Chimera was certainly a big success. Um, you know, taking out Hux and PV off the finalizer earlier and doing some overflow with the power pivot was a you know not quite as big of a success as he was hoping for but still a pretty effective one uh, with no ships left in hand or no cards left in hand he can go ahead and uh, he's going to play the projective make him pay to to limit that drain. He's got to pay two. Let's see if he has another trooper. He does. At least that one's a non-unique trooper. But he used unique troopers to cancel two separate drains. That cost him, that saved him four force if that wasn't allowed. And in a game this tight, that could certainly be a difference maker. But it will stop him from getting another drain in. He's got to move some ships around. He's going to move his B-Wings back in front of the finalizer. I assume he's just going to keep the two B-Wings in front of the finalizer for the rest of the game. But that finalizer is just going to keep moving away to whatever system it happens to, you know, need to go to to block a drain. Uh, neither Gold Leader nor Green Leader draw alone and with no cards in hand. He knows a second ship isn't coming down, so he's just going to keep popping this around and just using these two locations to force Drain at to, uh, to try and finish this game off. So there's the second Drain there. So if he had not canceled the limited resources, things would be even right now. is just just hanging around okay, one more drain cancel with a unique guy so that's a third unique cancel that's six force now that's been saved and considering he's only got 11 left at this point he'd be down to five he wouldn't be able to pay to move around as much or pay to drain and do some things. Uh, it certainly seems like that's the most likely thing that's going to get changed, but you know, I don't know for sure. I don't know when. I'm, I'm sure they're going to have to do some play tests and games and things like that, but that's the one that seems like it's the one that uh, has the least objections to it, shall we say. Uh, whether or not that's enough to to tone the map deck down, I don't know. Maybe we'll start. Maybe they'll start with that one, 
see how it goes, and then, you know, see if they need to add a second one later down the road. I don't know. Uh, but now he no longer has ultimatum satisfied, so now he gets drained for three at this site. So, again, not being able to cancel that with the it's a hit that turn. So now he uh, he's definitely, excuse me, uh, fallen behind. He's lost seven cards to drains instead of losing the four cards to the limited resources. So uh, I know Mike was saying after the game that that was kind of what he thought might have been the, the key moment that cost him the game. It certainly didn't help. Uh, between that, a couple of these drains being canceled by strategic reserves with unique troopers, uh, and the hit and run. I think the hit and run, to me, was the one that kind of, you know, kind of was the one that turned the tide and kind of, uh, you know, was the beginning of the end. Uh, at this point in time, best he can do is drain at that location. One more trooper. <laughs> and uh, that should be the end of this game here. So uh, great job by both these guys playing a very tight game. I think this was very late in the, uh, the May OCS. They were both... Uh, you know, pretty far up near the top. I think uh, Mike ended up, uh, see, I got that right here somewhere. Yeah, Mike ended up 10 and 2, so this is one of his two losses. Certainly could have, uh, I'm sorry, he ended up 9 and 3 with 30 points. So uh, this could have gotten him. He finished sixth. I mean, this would have gotten him somewhere into like the third, fourth range. Uh, pretty respectable finish, and uh, and Silver Glen finished eighth with uh, with 28 points. So, you know, two top 10 guys playing a, a very well played game on most parts. Uh, a couple of tiny little mistakes as we pointed out, but uh, certainly map is beatable. Uh, sometimes you do need a couple things to go your way, and uh, you know sometimes it will. It does just take just the tiniest little thing to uh, to disrupt you. Uh, we'll look at a second game real quick. I have no idea what this deck is doing. Uh, Pipe29 posted this one in the Gemp chat this morning. It was like, hey, I got a great game for you. It's a deck I built myself. Um, you know, something unique. And uh, he played this game against Chris Kelly the other day. Uh, Chris Kelly's playing Diplo. Uh, he's doing a Insurrection... Must be allowed to speak. Strike planning start. Uh, he's going to... The Senate player started Senate and the Tatooine site with the 12 card hand. Uh, looks like it's probably just more of like a mains type platform. We've missed it twice, I'm sure. He'll pull something else here. He's going to go back and get his bridge. So, yeah, it looks like he's just, you know, basically a mains type deck. He's got uh, short range combos, a couple of them, really just running Baron and Ship, Mara, Jendon. Maybe there's a, uh, a cannon floating around for those guys. Uh, a couple of the key senators, you know, not uh, too many of each guy, just a couple of the, like, four or five guys, because he's not playing any of the political effects, just trying to use some of their abilities. Uh, to really take advantage of things, get an extra force activation jump. And he's playing against Chris Kelly. Uh, Chris Kelly's 2018 Nationals champion, or sorry, 2017 U.S. Nationals champion. Uh, in Pittsburgh was top four at the Endor Grand Prix just last month. Uh, May OCS, he finished in 13th place, uh, 26 points, so that's 7 and 5, so not bad. Uh, he certainly has had some other months, uh, I think he was one of the early months, in the first month he might have been like 10 and 2 or 11 and 1 and might have lost out on tiebreakers I think. He's got the prison out, he got the bridge out, so nice little activation jump. He draws a couple more cards. That's always risky when you're doing a 12 card hand and you draw a bunch of cards right off the bat. Because if your opponent does play Grimtosh and they put all your cards back, you've kind of lost your advantage. You know, by using the 12 card start, you get extra cards in your hand to, to start with. And 
that's it. You don't get any other effects. So if you get Grimtoshed because you draw over 12, um, you've kind of just given up everything that you you know started for. Uh, we're going to see Diplo strike planning for General Solo, put Mothma down, use Mothma to get Chandrilla, and play Evac control as well. Evac is going to be probably huge in this matchup because I would expect to see you know, in a mains heavy deck like this, probably a few Battle Destiny adders. We see the I Have You Now in there already. There's probably a few other things or people that add Battle Destinies along the way. Uh, and he'll get that Tantive moving where it's supposed to go. Uh, we see he did draw the cannon, so we, we were right on that. He's got the Onyx to go with it. He's going to accelerate and get his Hover Cam. Probably drop a couple. He only has one Senator, though. Just Lot Dodd. Would be could be kind of risky in a deck like this against Diplo. Diplo does play some rebel leaders of ability less than four or politics plus two. So your power is equal to your politics at the Senate. Uh, most guys have their game text canceled. Uh, we do know that Diplo runs Bale, who's a senator, and they typically run Leia Organa, virtual, who's also a senator. Uh, Mothma is a senator, so those are guys of power or politics. And then in terms of leaders, you usually have, you've got General Solo, sometimes you've got General Kraken. Um, so just throwing like Lot Dodd down by himself uh, in the Senate would be a very, very, very risky move. And he's got 22 cards in his hand at this point, so... Uh, if he can't find what he's looking for, uh, he's got bigger fish to fry. Chris only has five cards, but he's going to use some use pile searches to help with that. We'll put Chewy Protector down for five, take a card. Hopefully he's got somebody to back Chewy up. There's a young Skywalker to the Cantina. That will get him another card. Owen and Brew to the farm for free. Leia goes to the Senate. She's going to cancel the hover cam. That only activates 15. Still doesn't seem like it's a problem because he's got so many cards in hand. He'll complete the stolen data tapes uh, and take a card from reserve deck. He saves a force and does not move Chewy, so I think we can expect he's probably got a dodge uh, in his hand, or maybe that'd be the card that he just took was the dodge. Now he's going to force push. He grabs a second senator. Choke Vader versus Chewy. Barrier. Barrier by itself is not going to be enough. Maul's going to go to the Cantina. Curious. With Grievous. And first strike. Try and take down Luke with, with a weapon swing, and then a battle destiny, and then power. Uh, he's got the evac control, so he's going to uh, pick up a card and probably cancel the I have you now. He still hits uh, with the Senate not be objective not being flipped because he doesn't have any senators out yet. Uh, Toombuck was only a three, but still good enough to hit and cause forfeit zero. He'll evac a card. So 
Maybe I didn't have to waste the I have you now, because the evac got played first. And there's a five for the escape pod. So it's going to be Luke and six, unless he's got a Hujix in that uh, four card hand. And we've seen some of these uh, Diplo decks, usually like some of the ones with the Young Skywalker version, some of them have started to run Savrip, um, but no Savrip on table just yet. So he lost, he did have to lose the six battle damage. We'll get a peek at the six cards he lost. He top decked, Keep Your Eyes Open, Bright Hope, Jedi Lev, Rebellions are built on Hope, Bail, and Jin, uh, before having to lose the Young Skywalker. Not too many mission critical cards. Bail would be a nice one to have, particularly to go to the Senate. Uh, he'll activate one now, use it, and go fish out the Hujix. He pays the drain for one at the Senate. Seems like a risky play. He'll go to move phase. He'll shift some guys around. He'll flip. He'll draw a bunch. Chewie's going to move away. See if we see Owen and Baru stay there. I would expect them to. I just want to get too risky again. He's already burned. His barrier's gone. He already took some overflow. Might not. Doesn't need to really force things. His opponent's getting 15, which is a decent number, but if he's got to pay 3 to drain in each spot, he's probably only draining in the cantina right now. Alright, so there's Lot Dodd. And there is Edsel. So that'll flip him, which is good. It also gives him a Senate majority now. So he can start using lots of text during the control phase to take uh, cards in the hand from Force Pile, which is pretty awesome. He's going to Force Lightning Lost, targeting Owen and Baru. And successfully gets rid of them. It's going to leave Chewie kind of hanging out to dry. Again, uh, could have a dodge, may not have a dodge. Grab aim high now to at least make him pay for the retrieval. Good move with the no escape. Get the force lightning back. That's certainly a card that can come in handy uh, against Diplo. They've got a number of uh, lower ability characters, which are really good to to use force lightning on. Uh, we'll see him dodge. No firepower shield. He can use his get combo to cancel the react. That'll at least keep the battle going a little longer and force him to lose Chewie or play the Hujix. Uh, that'll also f flip him back because I don't think he'll occupy the number of battlegrounds. No battleground site and system. This doesn't count as a battleground, the Senate. So that'll flip him back. No battle damage. But Darkseid certainly has some uh, some great board position here. One of the other drawbacks to Diplo uh, is it always the, it it starts the game behind, essentially. There's so many different you know cards and things that it puts on the table right off the bat. I mean, three effect Diplo, you basically only have uh, about a 40 card deck left, and you put like 11 cards on the table, and then your eight opening hand. And then, you know, you pull out your first couple locations and things like that, and you're down to well into your mid-30s by the end of your first turn. He draws ticks. 
Sith Furies that into a Phantom Menace, which is uh, incredibly lucky. Uh, but even still, Tix was still going to be a pretty decent draw. He was a 4. Uh, that would have given him 10. 10 to 5 would have still killed Leia. Uh, but she would have covered. Now she's going to take 2 overflow. Now he does flip back now, though, because he doesn't have 2 Senators in the Senate. But I don't know that uh, he's going to play the Hujix to save the 1-2 remaining battle damage.
think I lost audio there for a couple minutes. Uh, but if we wrap up the game here, you know, Chris is really far behind. He's going to go ahead and he's going to call it. I apologize, you guys lost audio there for a few minutes. Uh, there were a couple of battles there where they just traded cards with Savrip and whatnot um, and helped Chris claw back into the game, but ultimately he doesn't really have enough left. And now that dark side is spread out, he's looking at some pretty big drains across the board here. Uh, he's still just losing by about four or five cards a turn, which is more than he can retrieve with the celebration, and he's already pretty far behind. Um, interesting deck, great game played by both players. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry about that audio thing there. Uh, the wife called, and I muted my microphone, and then forgot to unmute it when I stopped talking to her. Um, so yes, it's, it's her fault again. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, and have a great day.